Hey everyone, this is Nick from Catskill Mountain Customs here in upstate New York. And today I have a video that's probably long overdue. I get so many people asking me about my personal English wheels, and also a lot of people asking me about which English wheel that you should buy. So, I'll start off, I'll give you a look at mine, and then I'll tell you my opinions on which one maybe you should get. So I'll start off with the English wheel that got me started. This is my Harbor Freight English wheel. I've had it for longer than I can remember. Um, this is like the Volkswagen Golf of English wheels. Uh, there's a ton of them out there. They're cheap, but they do their job. Um, as you can see, mine's modified a bit. However, most of the time I've owned it and used it, I use it just the way it came out of the box. And I made a ton of stuff with it. If you go back into my older YouTube videos, you can see me using it and getting great results. And as you can see, it's still in my shop now, and I have no intentions of getting rid of it anytime soon. It comes in handy all the time, especially for smaller parts. Um, I could go into how I modified it, but if you're interested in that, do yourself a favor. Look up Racheline at Pro Shaper LLC. He's on Instagram. He's got popular YouTube. But he's got great videos on how to modify these things and tune up the anvils and everything else. So check that out if you're interested. That's it. This is the wheel that got me started and it still gets a ton of use. Now let's go check out the other wheel that everybody is always asking me about. This is my FJ Edwards Type E English wheel. The Cadillac of English wheels. Arguably one of the best ever made. It's a solid cast unit. It weighs roughly 1,800 pounds. It was produced by F.J. Edwards in London in the 1950s. Um, F.J. Edwards made a ton of different English wheels throughout the years, and they were all used in the best coach building shops in the world. Um, it took me a very long time to track this down, with just finding one in the United States that I could afford. Um, and finally, I came upon this one through someone on the internet had it. It was in Georgia. We ended up working on a deal and I had it shipped up here to New York. This one has some sort of interesting backstory. It was actually converted to a big swaging or bead rolling machine. Um, and it wasn't some sort of janky home conversion. It was done professionally. It had really big, heavy machine parts. It had beautifully machined dies. It was obviously a two-person uh, operation because it had a gear mechanism that someone would crank while the other person fed the panel. I wish I knew for sure where it came from because it must be a cool story. But anyways, when I got it, it was kind of in rough shape. It was missing the top anvil holder, so I made this one up. I outfitted it with some beautiful Hoosier Profile anvils. The mechanism was a little crusty, so I took all that apart and cleaned it, lubed it up, and now it just, it just worked great. I mean, this thing is a pleasure to use. It produces beautiful panels. However, it is still a precision instrument. If you don't know what you're doing with one of these, you're going to ruin a lot of panels. It gives you the ability to put on a ton of pressure, way too much pressure, way too easily, and you can really, you know, squeeze a panel into oblivion with this thing. But, I mean, it's, it's my baby, I love it, and I'll keep this one forever. So if you're in the market for an English wheel, and you don't know which one you should buy, I find you generally fall into one of three categories. First category is you're pretty much a new metal worker. You might have a couple of basic tools, maybe you can weld a little bit, but in general, you're pretty bare bones, you're starting out, it seems like something that you'd be interested in, you wanna give it a try. If that's you, I suggest going for something like the Harbor Freight English Reel. There's the Harbor Freight one like I have, they still make them, they're still all over the place. Um, companies like Eastwood, Jags, Woodward Fab, Bailey, they all have ones similar. Um, they're generally less than $1,000, and you know, honestly, I still have mine. It's not a bad investment because even if you progress and you want to upgrade your English wheel to a bigger one, you can still keep that other one around just like I did, and it really does come in handy on those tight panels like I mentioned earlier. And one of the reasons why I recommend staying below $1,000, like I said, the Harbor Freight one probably comes in around $350 to $400 with all the anvils. You're going to need a lot of other tools if you want to get into this business or hobby, right? So don't go crazy on buying an English wheel and you might not even like using it. You might give it a try and say, man, this isn't for me. So you're not going to get hurt too bad. If you don't like it, you could sell it. But if you really do like it and you upgrade, 
you can still keep that one around. If you look online through Instagram and you see in the background of some of the best metal shapers, coach builders out there, you'll see Harbor Freight wheels tucked in the background in their shops because they're handy little tools to have and you're not gonna go wrong buying one. The next category of person I get reaching out to me a lot is a person who's been in metal work for a while. You can weld, you can do general fabrication, you have a good selection of tools already, and you're looking to add metal shaping to your skill set. Now, generally, when you're that type of person, you're not looking to make metal shaping your mainstay. You're not abandoning all the other stuff. But like I said, you want to add that skill to your skill set. For someone like that, I always recommend one of the mid-range English wheels. You don't have to jump in and buy something like this guy, but if you get something from Metal Ace, say, or... Um, I think Imperial English Wheels sold by Trip Tools or Woodward Fab has a decent one. If you get one of those mid-range English wheels, you're going to be spending probably around three to four thousand dollars, but that thing will last you forever. If you're not looking to make it the main part of your job or business or whatever or hobby, that will do everything that you're ever going to need it to do. It's a worthwhile investment. They keep their value, and that's just a really good way to go because you can increase your skills on it. You already have all of the other tools that you need to support the work that you're gonna do on it. Um, and you're just gonna keep it forever. So that's a really good investment to go with and I always recommend it, you can't go wrong. Midler Brothers is another one who makes some nice mid-range English wheels. Um, check those out if you're in that category of person. Now the last person who's gonna need advice is a person who's been doing metal shaping for a while now. Maybe you started with a Harbor Freight wheel, maybe you went in with one of those mid-range wheels and you really like it. This is something that you want to do, it's your hobby, it's your passion, you want to do more of it. The biggest question generally with that type of person is one of these big cast wheels worth it? Because like I said, to find one of these vintage ones is hard, they're expensive, there are companies out there like Imperial who make beautiful, almost Let's call it the copies of this, right? The big Imperial English wheel is a copy of this wheel. Um, nothing wrong with it. They look like beautiful products, but they are expensive, right? You're in like 10 grand for something like that. Is it worth it? In my opinion, yes. If you're an English wheel guy and you're going to be doing this, these things by far are better than all the other ones I talked about. They produce beautiful panel quality. Um, they have, obviously, they're big enough to handle whatever size panel you're going to need and they just are the best and the other thing is they're also great investments especially these old ones are only going up in value they never go down in value there's always going to be a market for them and i'm sure even the new imperial ones hold their value if you look to sell it you're going to get you know one of the imperial ones you're going to get most of your money back if you find one of these good old ones you might even make money on it if you decide you want to get out metal shaping one day so those are my recommendations. If you fall in one of those categories, that's the wheel you would buy. Now, a couple things though, just in general, that I'd say stay away from. One is the ultra cheap uh, wheels. They're made by, I don't even know what company. I see them around. They have really thin anvils. They're like inch and a half or two inch. Um, they're really flimsy. They're made super cheap. That's just not worth it. They're generally like two to 300 bucks. Um, you can't do a whole lot with those things. You're going to be constantly fiddling with it. Avoid it. Number two that you see with a lot of manufacturers, and this is a concept I didn't get for a long time. Um, there are manufacturers out there. There's a really big manufacturer out there that they build these super beefy English wheels. Now, when you think about metal shaping, what are you doing? You're stretching and you're shrinking metal, right? When you shrink metal, it gets thicker. When you stretch it, it gets thinner. If an English wheel has zero flex to it, you're not going to be able to pan, pan, wow. You're not going to be able to planish out a beautiful panel if the English wheel can't flex for those minute changes in the panel thickness. So if you buy an English wheel or you make an English wheel, if you make it super ultra rigid, you're going to run into problems because when you get from that thinner part of your panel to the thicker part of your panel, the wheel's not going to flex around it and you're going to put just ruts in your panels. So that's something that you see happening with manufacturers who produce English wheels, but they don't necessarily use them. So that's a wrap. That's my opinion. Those are my English wheels. Like I said, it's my opinion. Um, if you feel differently, leave a comment below. 
And uh, if you have any other ideas for topics that you want discussed or touched on, I'm happy to do it. So thanks for checking it out.